This video was made possible by Raycon. Get top quality, super comfortable, and surprisingly affordable wireless earbuds for 15% off at buyraycon.com slash RLL. Okay, so here's the situation that you found yourself in somehow. You're lost somewhere in the Amazon rainforest and you're trying to get back to civilization when you stumble across a river. Unfortunately for you, though, the river is absolutely swarming with thousands of piranhas, and your only way to get over to the other side is to cross it. How do you manage to do this safely and successfully without getting quickly transformed into a skeleton? First off, it's probably going to be important for you to understand how piranhas actually behave in the wild. They're indigenous to this region of South America, and the legend of bloodthirsty, ferocious piranhas is mostly a myth. The piranhas' fearsome reputation largely stems from the account of U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt after he visited South America in 1913, where he witnessed a group of locals who blocked part of a river off and starved the piranhas inside for days before they dumped a poor cow in for them to feast upon, which they rapidly tore apart and skeletonized. Roosevelt was horrified and wrote about the incident extensively, which eventually trickled down into the minds of all of us through pop culture. In reality, though, piranhas are generally pretty tame and behave more like opportunistic scavengers. They generally only attack prey that's roughly their own size. But attacks on humans do still occur from time to time, so you are still at some serious risk during your crossing. The most savage species of piranha is the red-bellied piranha, so if it's them in the river ahead of you, you're in the most serious kind of danger. Their teeth are each like a small serrated knife, and when they chomp their jaws together, their upper and bottom rows of teeth interconnect like a deadly pair of scissors. A single bite from one is capable of chomping off one of your appendages like a toe or a finger or something else. So here's what you can do during your crossing to avoid any harm. First off, you need to time your crossing well. You should ideally cross during the South American wet season between January and March when the rivers are deeper and the food for piranhas is more plentiful. You should avoid crossing during the dry season, however, which is between June and August, when the rivers are obviously drier and the food is more scarce, which means piranhas are more likely hungry and willing to attack prey outside of their normal diets, people like you. Secondly, make sure to cover any open wounds that you might have on your body and do whatever you can to prevent any bleeding. Like sharks, piranhas can be attracted to blood because it indicates wounded prey that would be easier to take down. If you're feeling sick or otherwise unwell, don't attempt to make the crossing until you feel better. Thirdly, you need to choose a strategic area along the river to cross at where piranhas are less likely to be at. You need to take care not to cross anywhere near a site where people may have been fishing because piranhas will be attracted to the dead fish and bait. As tempting as it might be, you also shouldn't cross over a portion of the river where the water is very still. Still water is great great for humans to swim and wade in, but it's also where piranhas generally breed at. Hundreds of people have been bitten by piranhas in Brazil in still waters while swimming just over the last few years. Fourthly, you need to make sure to cross the river at night. Piranhas are nocturnal creatures and are generally sleeping during the night, while they hunt and are most active at dawn and throughout the day. Fifthly, and perhaps most importantly of all, you have to take care to move across the river slowly without any sudden movements or splashing and without any talking. Sudden or rapid movements out of context and splashing around can alert piranhas that you might be in distress or nervous and cause them to investigate. So to the best of your abilities, you need to swim straight and true and as quietly as possible so as not to disturb them. While you're crossing the river, make sure to avoid any areas beneath trees because piranhas will generally linger around there, waiting for things like birds or their eggs to drop down for a snack. Finally, if you see piranhas actively feeding in an area, you should obviously steer clear away from that. While piranha attacks on humans are rare, when they're actively involved in a feeding frenzy, anything can happen. Hypothetically speaking, a group of piranhas are capable of taking down prey much larger than themselves like you for a few reasons. For one thing, when a piranha bites, they don't chew. When they bite down and rip off a chunk of flesh, they just swallow it down right to their bellies. They'll continue to keep snapping their jaws shut over and over like this until their bellies are full. Secondly, if piranhas are attacking in a horde of hundreds, they're in incredibly efficient team eaters. During a feeding frenzy, the piranhas will continuously rotate in and out, so as one piranha takes a bite, it immediately moves out of the way for the next piranha to come in and take a bite, and so 
so on and so on. The speed that piranhas do these bite rotations at is frighteningly ferocious, which is what causes the infamous boiling water effect to appear on the surface of the river while they're feasting. There are only a handful of recorded incidents of piranhas killing humans, like recently back in 2018 when a drunk 18-year-old man fell off a boat in a river in Bolivia and was eaten alive by them. There isn't really any reliable data for what I'm about to say, but research conducted by scientists in the past has estimated that in order for you, a grown adult, to be eaten alive by piranhas down to your skeleton, it would take somewhere between 300 and 500 starved and desperate piranhas somewhere around five minutes to do that. The likelihood of this happening to you in your river crossing, though, is so minuscule that you shouldn't really be worried about that at all, especially if you follow all of the steps that I just mentioned before. The two biggest things that piranhas are attracted to are blood and noise, so if you can minimize both of those, your chances of survival and getting over to the other side of that river are very, very high. On the other hand, if you love making noise or listening to noise while you're dealing with a stressful situation like crossing a piranha-infested river, then maybe you should reconsider your crossing. But honestly, you're probably just watching this video from home or from work right now, so if you're stuck there far away from any piranhas and you want to help improve your studying or work habits or get into a more productive workout routine, calm and thoughtful music that will help you focus and concentrate will help you tremendously, and Raycon earbuds will be one of your best tools tools to help. They cost about half as much as the big name earbuds, but they sound just as good. They sent me a pair of their everyday E25s to try, and I've been incredibly impressed by the audio quality of them. But along with that, they're so comfortable that they get to the point where you could easily forget that they're even there. But I still found them secure enough to listen to while I was studying for the research of this video, and even when I went out to go take my dog for a walk. In fact, they come with six different size gel tips to ensure that they'll fit great for you specifically. Plus, they can make calls, they're water resistant, and they have a great six hour long battery life. But best of all, by heading over to buyraycon.com RLL or by clicking the link down in the description, you'll get 15% off of their already affordable prices. So go ahead and check them out and help support real life lore while you're at it. And as always, thank you for watching.